these very same people are the quickest to cry racism at the slightest provocation or for no reason at all. There's no systemic racism, there is no law, there is nothing that says that I can't do something as a black person that you can do. We're honoring all of the great white men who are being smeared and defamed and torn down. In the United States, the richest mothers and their newborns are the most likely to survive the year after childbirth, except when the family is black. The richest black mothers and their babies are twice as likely to die as the richest white mothers and their babies. These thoughts come from Claire Kane Miller, Sarah Cliff, and Larry Buchanan in a New York Times article that appeared on February 15, 2023. We've lifted black infant mortality and the risk of black mothers in this segment at least twice in just over a year. Last May, we stated that Louisiana has the highest maternal mortality rate in the country and one of the highest in the world at 58.1 deaths per 100,000. Maternal mortality, pregnancy-related death, refers to the death of a pregnant person during pregnancy, labor, or shortly after delivery. Maternal mortality in the United States is higher than in France, Germany, Italy, Canada, Japan, and England. And as Tanya Rawl pointed out in her commentary piece that appeared in the Louisiana Illuminator in August 2022, when the maternal mortality rate is high, so is the infant mortality rate. Well, in April 2024, things are not much better. Reports Andrea Gallo in the Advocate newspaper this week, Louisiana's infants are 65% more likely to die from being born too early or too small than babies across the rest of the country. This is according to the Advocate's analysis of federal data. Gallo adds, the state could have seen 458 fewer infant deaths in the decade before the pandemic if its rates of preterm birth and low birth weight mirrored the national average. But there is some good news to report. In our current legislative session, lawmakers are considering bills that would expand health care services to pregnant women and newborns while also increasing payment to their providers. The slate of bills would ensure newborn home visits for families on Medicaid and require insurers to pay for remote monitoring to allow patients to send in blood pressure and vital signs from home between appointments. Other legislation would increase payments to physicians who provide obstetric and gynecological care to Medicaid patients. And lawmakers are also considering whether to require Medicaid to cover doula care for physical and emotional support during pregnancy. According to Frankie Robertson, a consultant with the Amandala Group who represents several maternal health groups, we're not asking for more money. We're asking for the budget to be redistributed to save lives. Gallo seems to be a skeptic regarding the will of the conservative legislature to make infant mortality a priority. Some lawmakers have expressed concern over costs, even though many lawmakers are backing bills this session for educational savings accounts that have cost hundreds of millions of dollars in other states, and lawmakers recently approved a bevy of criminal justice bills projected to cost the state at least $32 million. But Susan East Nelson, executive director of Louisiana Partnership for Children and Families, said the state creates far more expensive problems when it does not invest in well-being for families. Better supported children are less likely to wind up in foster care or the criminal justice system. This investment is actually going to save us money in other places. The legislation to which Nelson refers is House Bill 860, coming from Representative Michael Eccles, Republican out of Monroe. The legislation would require Medicaid to cover home visits for newborns that are proven to help reduce infant mortality. According to the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children, Louisiana's programs reach only 10 percent of newborns on Medicaid. Using Medicaid to pay for home visits is the norm in many other states, including Arkansas and Alabama. Reports Gallo, new data on pregnancy-related deaths in Louisiana show the top factors in maternal deaths in 2020 were cardiomyopathy, cardiovascular conditions, and infections. 
said Dr. Veronica Gillespie Bell, an OBGYN and the medical director of Louisiana's Pregnancy Associated Mortality Review, access to health care is one of the biggest factors. Gillespie Bell was testifying for House Bill 489 from Representative Jason Hughes, Democrat out of New Orleans, which would require both insurance and Medicaid to cover earlier nutritional counseling for pregnant patients. They usually cannot qualify unless they're diagnosed with gestational diabetes, which health care providers say is too late. State Senator Royce Duplessis, Democrat out of New Orleans, is carrying a similar bill through the Senate, Senate Bill 300. Representative Hughes' bill would make mothers eligible for breast pumps earlier, requiring insurers to cover double electric breast pumps at 22 weeks gestation. For moms with babies in neonatal intensive care units, insurance would have to cover hospital-grade breast pumps. Dr. Omatola Uefo, a New Orleans neonatologist, testified that breast milk can strengthen premature babies and reduce the likelihood that they'll have chronic conditions. Hughes' bill would also require coverage of remote patient monitoring so women can upload daily blood pressure and other results during pregnancy. Gillespie Bell said such programs have helped her diagnose patients with preeclampsia and other conditions between appointments. Louisiana has the highest rate of births financed by Medicaid in the country, with 6 in 10 paid for by the program. But flaws in the state's Medicaid program hinder pregnancy care for both patients and providers. Some providers refuse to accept Medicaid patients because they lose money treating them because reimbursement rates are low and there are added administrative costs. As a result, Medicaid patients struggle to find providers, especially specialists. Moreover, Louisiana's obstetricians earn 66 cents on the dollar for Medicaid patients compared with Medicare. Regarding commercial insurance, hospitals and providers receive a combined $11,990 in reimbursement for privately insured patients, but they average less than half that for Medicaid patients, according to the Healthcare Cost Institute. In response to this, Senate Bill 190 from Senator Gerald Boudreau, Democrat of Lafayette, would raise Medicaid reimbursement rates, matching higher Medicare reimbursement rates for obstetric care, women's health, primary care, mental health care, and substance use disorder treatment. Louisiana must do more to address physician shortages. Medicaid must have an expanded role in covering women after birth. The Louisiana postpartum Medicaid care has been expanded in recent years. Gaps in coverage remain. About 8,000 births annually, annually in Louisiana, one in seven are covered by CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, rather than Medicaid. Women who qualify for CHIP earn between 138% and 185% of federal poverty guidelines. The program technically covers the baby, not the mother. So mothers lose coverage after giving birth and often miss postpartum checkups. But Duplessis Senate Bill 135 would expand 12-month postpartum coverage from Medicaid to women whose pregnancies are covered by CHIP. Doing so would cost the state about $7.7 .7 million annually, but it would be matched by nearly $20 million from the federal government. For many, the use of doulas improves satisfaction with the birth experience. Doulas are not health care providers and do not deliver babies, but they do provide emotional and physical support for patients during and after pregnancy. State Senator Regina Barrow, Democrat of Baton Rouge, and State Representative Matthew Willard, Democrat of New Orleans, are carrying bills to require Medicaid coverage for doulas as well. Said Barrow, Louisiana has consistently held an F grade in birth outcomes as long as I've been a legislator. I want to make sure we're giving every young family the tools they need so they can make the right decisions and get the support they need. Baton Rouge and Louisiana suffer from a wealth gap, a pollution gap, a systemic racism gap. But the question for us tonight is not just about ourselves, but about our children. This is something we should pray about. Lord God, we know that every child is precious to you. We pray for the health of all your children and their mothers. We thank you for the work being done to help so many children and mothers. Be with pregnant women everywhere as they prepare to give birth. 
strengthen their bodies and protect them from life-threatening diseases. Let aid resources, medical, community, governmental, reach families who need it the most and provide the help required so that all children may experience fullness of life. We are reminded by scripture that you are compassionate toward our physical needs. You fed thousands because you knew they couldn't get food on their own. You improve the quality of life of those handicapped by illness and by lack. We pray for you to help hungry families access the food resources they need to survive and for their children's health. Move among community health workers to inspire parents to learn new, sustainable ways to improve their children's diets. Reassure struggling parents that they can help their children grow up strong and healthy. We cry out to you, dear Lord, to ease this community's burden. Give us access to clean water and empower us with healthy hygiene and sanitation practices for the benefit of all of us, but particularly our children. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen.